I'll say this. I just got out of Godzilla minus one. Oh, shit. No spoilers, though. No spoilers. Probably one of the coolest movies I've ever seen, period. Wow. Easily top five. This It was just like, like I could tell, like, people in the theater were like, like, everyone got up. I was like, dude, that was so fucking cool. And I like people like around me were just like I could hear people like man this is awesome like while the movie's going I was like hell yeah dude it was so fucking dope okay so so answer this question is it the best Godzilla movie you've ever seen <sighs> probably man oh nice okay honestly okay. P- probably and uh, I'll also say this and this is not a spoiler the way they like use his atomic breath mm-hmm. it's way cooler than any of the newer movies. Oh shit! Okay, like what? And what I mean by that is like, like, uh, like there's a scene where it's just like it's honestly it's like the equivalent of dropping a nuke on Japan. Oh fuck! Uh, there's like like when he uses it, it's legit. Like like you see a mushroom cloud, whatever he points it at and blasts, and it's like, dude, it's like fucking. That sounds man. hardcore. Like, it was it was it was so hardcore, and uh, it was also just a classic Godzilla movie. Like where he is the bad guy, you know, he's a monster wrecking shit. So it's the humans versus him. That's how like originally Godzilla first came onto the scene. He wasn't it, a good guy. Is it first. technically like a remake or a reboot of Godzilla? It's like, oh, it's definitely it's definitely a reboot. You could tell. Nice. I'm seeing it this weekend, so I, I'm there already. I, I don't should, need to be sold man. on it anymore. But it's so cool. I was like, imp- the fact that it has a limited release in America, I'm like, dude, what? Because everyone I know who've already seen it, they're like, yo, this is fucking like crazy good nice and you care you care about i was saying this to myself i was like dude i cared more about the characters in this one movie than i've cared about any of the characters in the newest godzilla franchise you know what i mean like the human characters you mean yes exactly way more heart way more soul in this movie uh yeah you care Nice. We'll save save the good parts for when we we're gonna have to do an episode. Cody already saw it. Cody's not here today. Oh, yeah. Cody already wants to do it. Yeah. Cody said, "Fuck you guys. I'm not going to L.A. Comic Con." He couldn't. He couldn't roll with the big dogs. No, he wasn't standing on business. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like now I'm gonna have everyone saying that. <laughs> you already started me when we were in L.A. I, we couldn't stop I saying know, that. Dude. <laughs> I mean, dude, when you stand on business, you, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. I can't help it. I can't <laughs> help it. I, like, I, I try. I once tried not standing on business, and I almost fell over. <laughs> <laughs> so it's physically impossible for me. And it was... Uh... No, I have no segue. I was going to say it was physically impossible. You know what's not outside the realm of possibility? Is getting Kevin Smith on the podcast. Oh! Damn! That's right. Nice. That's right. We need to get him on yet. I don't think it is. He's coming. I don't think it is. Yeah, we're going to get him. He's coming. It was very cool to meet him. Welcome to Comics and Chronic. (laughs) This is a half-baked episode. It's me, Jacob H. I'm joined with Anthony Iannaccio, and we are discussing... Our time at LA Comic Con. Hell yeah, we were there for all three days. All three it, days, press pass. Press pass. We were hooked up with the press passes. Shout out to uh, Maria MJ. She was super cool. Oh yeah, we should definitely shout her out. When we got there, she said, "Hey, I'm MJ." And what? That's a cool name to be her? associated, huh? Oh, we did meet her. She was the girl woman at the table, right? Um, yeah, we met her when we came in when we got our badges. But yeah, we just want to give her a shout out because that was awesome. We went to New York Comic Con. We didn't have press passes there. I was there all three day, all four days. Wow, Jake was there the first day. It was kind of like it was kind of like a precursor to this, I guess. Like we were just there as you know, just fans hanging out. Cons are like a whole beast, you know. They're like a lot's going on there. Like if it's your if it's your first time going to a con, your senses will be very overwhelmed. There's like so much going on everywhere. A lot of stimuli. A lot of stimuli. But this con was really cool. Like, New York Comic Con is a couple floors. Like, Artist Alley is its own floor. But then everything else is on another floor. And then you got, you know, panel rooms elsewhere. But at LA Comic Con, I like the way it was spread out. You had yeah. Artist Alley kind of next to booths. kind of, And then a whole other floor where it had, like, video games you could play. Yeah. Just cool stuff all around. It was a really fun con and not... Super packed, but not in a bad way. Like it, you can move around without like shuffling. Oh yeah, no, for sure. It was, it was, it was cool. I liked it. I liked the size of it too, honestly. Yeah, 
It was it was big, but it wasn't like ginormous. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't saying? overwhelming either. Yeah. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. Yeah. Like I think all three days we absorbed what we needed to and like we were able to get everything. We stood on business, like we said. We were able to get everything done that we wanted to, really. Yeah, exactly. No, we came, we saw, we conquered. We conquered. Hell yeah. Dude, and who knew that cancer in comics would be our in to meeting the mega Goliath himself, Kevin Smith. Yeah, that was nuts. We didn't know. First of all, I don't think anyone knew Kevin Smith was going to be there. He wasn't advertised as being there. They knew he was going to be there. Yeah, it seems like a a day of surprise almost. I got the impression that he was probably literally asked like that week, if not that day, you know? Right, because at the panel he said, oh, I live 15 minutes away from here. It's like, what? Exactly. That's (laughs) why I think they called him. They're like, hey, man, can you like come in for like an hour and just host this but he killed it i think that panel he he, he made it come to life it was a serious panel but like it was cool to hear everyone's stories you know like yeah you know i'm not gonna get personal about it but you know my dad is in remission for cancer and it was it was just you know it wasn't something i wanted to do actually for that reason it's like i don't want to be here thinking about that but when kevin smith's there you know it's kind of hard to say no so i'm glad we did go to that panel yeah no for real it was cool it made cancer tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he, he also did a good job of moderating in that, like, he didn't make the focus about himself. I'm not saying anyone else would have, but I'm sure, like, most people were there to see Kevin Smith. And he for sure just, like, you know, he's like, no, nah, this is really for the panels. Yeah, because I think the the only – so it was – a three-person panel and Kevin Smith moderated it. There was the author of Cancer Vixen, Marisa Akicella, which I actually have that comic. I just never read it. Do you really? Yeah, I have that comic. I, well, crazy. it's my wife's comic, so but it's part of our collection, so nice. I consider it mine. But she was cool. Um, there was something, someone from the American Cancer Society there. She was like an oncologist with the American Cancer Society for research. Yeah, so she like actually knew she about the high science. high ranking, yeah, cancer science person. I don't know what the right vernacular is, but yeah. Captain, no, I don't know. I don't know how Captain that Captain Cancer. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. I was like, no. Uh, and then there was there was a guy on the panel that was a cancer survivor. He had stomach cancer, a really young guy. Yeah. So so it was interesting. Again, it wasn't necessarily anything funny or meant to be funny, obviously. But yeah. like Kevin Smith being there, he added humor to it in a way that made it less like I don't know tense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it was cool to see him. And he seemed really. Cool. I mean, in the brief time that we met him, it seemed he seemed really like he seems chill. Like he's easy to talk to. Easy to talk to. Because when you said, "Can we take a selfie?" He grabbed your phone and he's like, "This is yeah. how we do it." Like he yeah, he, yeah. he took that selfie, which I think is even cooler. You know? Yeah, he did. That is cool. So we'd love to have him on the pod. He's a cool guy. Like meeting him is obviously like bucket list thing for me in terms of like he's a screenwriter, most, director, comic yeah. writer. You Most know? people involved in entertainment and comic books, Kevin Smith is like the pinnacle. Easily, yeah. easily, easily. And I feel like, and we've talked about this too, like a lot of guests that we have on, I feel like we connect most. Like Rodney Barnes is another great example where he's in both yep. the film world, even the television world, and the comic book world. Like And the podcast. The podcast he now world, has his yeah. own podcast. Yes. That? Run Fool. That's his yeah, podcast. Run I need to Fool. listen to that. I, I want to listen. We should actually, let's listen to it and let's do an episode. Yes. Yes. Let's give a Pesci to Run yeah, Fool. Yeah, let's give a Pesci to Ronnie <laughs> Barnes. Let's cover Ronnie Barnes's podcast on our podcast, then get him back on the podcast to talk about his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's podcastception. That's po- podcastception. <laughs> that's what that is, yeah. But other cool stuff happened too. I mean, that was that's definitely the Lots. biggest story from our Comic Con visit because again, we weren't expecting Kevin Smith. It was, it was literally also the last, the last, day, last thing. Yeah, and we got hit up that day, and we were like, "Hey, like Kevin Smith is going to moderate." It was the one thing for all you listeners. It was the one thing that Anthony and I we were going to avoid. <laughs> We're yeah, like, seriously. no, we're not going to do Kansas and comics for, you know, for the reason Anthony said. And also, it's just like, it's really morbid, it's depressing, and it's cool, but it's like, I don't really care until Kevin Smith yeah. came into the equation. Yeah. That, I mean, that's like, being you know completely what? honest. I do yeah. care about cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think we didn't really go to any panels because, again, going back to like the overwhelming part, like we did, most of our time was spent in Artist Alley, real talk. Like we want to talk to a lot of writers and artists. I think we killed it on the networking front. Yes, we did. I, I think we did. I, like I we totally utilized, we did. no, seriously, like we, that was a very productive use of A, our press badge, and then B, our time there. 
I think so too. And you know? one of the coolest things, so like we were there Friday night, it started. It was not that long on Friday night. I kind of liked Friday night the most low key. Yeah, because it was so There was chill. nobody there, but yeah. all the artists were there, but like there were no family. No there lines. were no, uh, yeah, there were no lines. Like there were no people there. Right. So it was really fun to do that. But the first yeah. person that, like, we were walking around and Matt Bores, who's the co writer, co creator, co artist of Justice Warriors, um, he, he was like, hey, Comics and Chronic. Yeah. And uh, he was a cool guy to talk to. He, he did a sketch. I like him. He's good people. He did a sketch for me. Yeah, he's really good people. We're going to have him on when Justice Warriors Volume 2, and I'm sure he's working on other stuff. Yeah, he says he's working out. on some other shit. Yeah, very top secret stuff. He, he wouldn't even tell us Comics and Chronic. Um, no, my it's funny. My edible started hitting. He was like when he first was like when he shouted us out. He's like, "Comics chronic." I was like, already was like, it was starting to peak. And I was like, "Oh dear God!" Yeah, I and like, I was yeah. halfway through stuffing my face with like an eight dollar pretzel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh shit, man!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. But, like, every creator we talked to was pretty chill. Chip Zartsky was awesome. It was cool to Chip, talk to him. Chip was very cool. I liked him. I, so I paid for a sketch, um, and I said, and you either could, that was awesome. for a little bit more money, you could tell him what to, what to sketch, or he'll just sketch whatever he wants. And I yeah. guess we talked to him for a minute. We told him about Comics and Chronic, and he drew High Hulk. <laughs> ah, legally High Hulk. Picture. He's legally high. That's yeah. it. That's the Hulk high. You know what was cool is when he was drawing that and he wrote Hulk high, like everyone in line started cracking up. Yeah. Lines. No, this is cool. Like we, you can't, we can't that's convey it in the podcast. Yeah. It's just audio. We'll post this. We'll but. post it. Yeah. That's a dope ass picture. Hulk high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I love that he did that once he found out we're comic synchronic. Yeah. Cause I feel like, so with a lot of creators, like, the comics and chronic reaction is I've generally found that they're laughing, you know, it's like, Oh, oh yeah. I get it. It's mostly a positive reaction. Yeah. No one's like, Oh, we no Thank you. No, thank you. You yeah. know, at most people would be like, Oh, well, I don't smoke weed, but yeah, but no one's ever been like, Oh, okay. Like most people are like, Oh, nice. Comics and chronic. Like Josie Campbell. Josie she Campbell, loved yeah. it. She's like, Oh, or like, we thought she was going to be like, Oh, like, do we have to, do we have to smoke? She was, she was actually asking us, "Can she I smoke? Wanted to like, can I take an edible?" Smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wanted to get high for the podcast, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, so look forward to that because she did say she wants to come on. And, yeah, uh, I think we'll have, definitely have her on in the new year. And she writes, "I picked up the new adventures of Shazam. I haven't read it yet, but it looks awesome." And she's a you said she's a head writer for she's the head writer on oh. Super My Adventures uh, with Superman. My Adventures with Superman on HBO Max. Yeah, which is a great show, by the way. If you haven't checked out that Superman cartoon, I watched highly suggest three episodes it. of it. I like it. I should finish yeah. it honestly because I do like it. It's a great interpretation of Superman. Yeah. Uh, what's that? What's that dude's name from the boys? Uh, Jack Quaid. He Jack does the Quaid voice plays of Superman. Superman. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, wild. It's very, it's very cool. It fits. Yeah, we met a lot of cool comic creators, man. Teeny Howard was cool. She's very cool, honestly, and she's yeah. hot. If I'm being honest, yeah, I'm for not, sure. Like, I'm not gonna be like creepy, but like she's super attractive. Like I was following her on Instagram, and I was like, oh nice. I was, like, <laughs> cool little like goth punk rock vibe going to her and. Tall too. She's a tall woman, but she seems super down with the concept of comics and chronic, which oh, yeah. we love. She seemed you know? very down, so gave her a business card and told her to st stand on business. Pretty much, <laughs> I, I think, think she ooh, stands on business, dude. That's what we should have. We should have business cards that say ooh. "Stand on Business." <laughs> 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 we'll make those. A lot of people did ask for cards, but we gave we gave away our Joe Pesci sticker qr code i hope they use it i might honestly print some cards just for the future yeah maybe that's a more professional way to do it but these look cool cody ziggler oh, they look great cody ziggler who we met uh yeah. he writes miles morales he put this on his laptop the pesci sticker that is very cool he seemed very down to come on as well yeah and i do want to talk to him yeah some people also just like the demonic aspect of the pesci which is pretty cool too I think that, but yeah, Teeny Howard loved it. So mm. Cody Ziegler. I also think, also for those of you that don't know, Cody Ziegler, uh, he was a writer in the writing room for She Hulk. Mm. Uh, fuck, what else are some of his credits? I don't. He writes Miles watch. Morales, like I said. Miles Morales, but he also does, he also has, has like some TV credits as well. Nice. Again, going back to we kind of gel with those people that go into both worlds. Brian Edward Hill was he wasn't at the con, but that's another great example of exactly, like exactly. He works in film and television, so yeah, no, it's cool. I very much liked it. I spoke to Ryan Otley. Yes. He was okay. He wasn't as cool as Chip Zardsky, but he was, 
When cool. we say cool, I mean these people have long ass lines all weekend. They don't have exactly. time to have like a full conversation with you. Yeah, you know? they don't. And I don't think we were like other nerds who were trying to keep them for long conversations. Right. We're just like, yo, we're huge fans. We're also stoners and we have a podcast. Yeah, we, we kept it short and, and sweet. And a lot of people see it. We kept it short and sweet. And I think people are like, nice. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we weren't, like, trying to, like, kiss ass to, like, get them on. Right, and you don't want to. Like, Chip Zartsky, we were there for a little while, Matt Bors, because they both did sketches. So that <laughs> exactly. that was a good... Um, Aubrey Sitterson, I want to I wanna shout him out. I bought a lot of books from him, including an Archie book, Archie versus the World, The Stoned Master. Like, that's why we stopped at his table. He had a comic called The Stoned Master. Who's that guy? Who's this guy? Um, we talked to him, and then we talked to the artist... Right next to him. Oh, that dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He was. He was funny. Honestly, he was a character. He was hilarious. Like he. He's, he was and he's hilarious. Super down to come on the pod. Like he. He yeah. just doesn't have anything to promote right now. Which that's cool. Like whenever you have something to promote, hit us up. You'll. You could come chill with us. Yeah. I also feel like because I don't ever hear of these creators and these comics until like for instance we meet them. I, I know they're not down, but I would still be down for them to come on and talk about a comic that they do have that's already been out because I haven't read it, you know? Yeah. Like, I've never read any of that dude's comics, and I'd be down to, like, talk with him about it, you know? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I definitely agree with that. So I don't think you need to just come. I I, I get the business side of it. Like, you do yeah. want to promote your shit. And, but, and uh, he's he specifically told me, he's like, I like to keep a low profile unless I have something to promote. So that's I, res- that's I cool. respect that. Jason Fabok, when I had emailed him, pretty much said the same thing. He's like, yeah. When I, when I promote stuff, I'll do it. Yeah, some people will just come on no matter what. Like, we had Rodney Barnes. Well, Rodney Barnes is always working, though, so he always that has something grinds, to promote. <laughs> Whether it's television or comic. Like, seriously, that For real. Does, also, like, I don't know, like, his life seems popping. All his yeah. Instagram is him having dinner with celebrities. Yeah, like, all day, like, every day. All day, every day <laughs> in Los Angeles. Dude, also, I just want to tell the the, the, the the listeners, just going like, because, okay, this is your first time in L.A. for the most part. Yes. And, uh, you know, it was cool. We saw a lot of celebs. And today in the movie theater, I saw Gata from FX's Dave in the movie theater, just, like, chilling. <laughs> Like I like I told you, he was like, "Yeah, you know, the Sony ain't playing. They shut down the movie theater." I was like, they didn't shut, "There's nobody there. Like, it's <laughs> ten in the morning, my guy." <laughs> well, it was funny because I literally like I was no bullshit. I was getting soda, and dude, it's funny. I saw him like a there was no one there, and I saw him, and I was like looking. At, I didn't want to be like in my head like, "Is that Gator? Or is that just like a black guy?" And I was like, looking at him, and then no, seriously, because you know, like sometimes I just wasn't sure. I was like, I don't want to go up to him and assume it's Gata, and it's just like, hey, I'm not Gata, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, no, that's fucking Gata. And then I saw him with the phone. That's why I asked you. I was like, dude, am I in the video? Because I watched him do that. Oh shit! And he's like, yeah, Sony ain't playing. I was like, dude, no, it's just ten in the morning. No one's there. <laughs> he's like, I saw him walk into the theater. Uh, I didn't even know he was in that Sydney Sweeney movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw him walk into the theater and there was like, you know, there was no one, I don't know. They didn't see him. There was no press or anything. It wasn't a special, yeah. there wasn't any Sony representation. So you think I he would of, go there to see Godzilla, but he's going to see the Sydney Sweeney movie. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, I love Sydney Sweeney. She's fucking <laughs> hot. Super what is the, what is the name of that movie? Anyone but you? Is that what it's called? <sighs> I don't know. It's terrible. <laughs> Bro, you live right next to the Sony lot, right? I literally live, yeah, right next to the Sony lot. <laughs> is it a Sony movie? I don't think it is. Yeah, oh, no, it is. is. It You're is. right, it is. It is. Dude, that's, that's how we do in LA, boy. Oh, Gator's in that movie. Yes, he's in it. Oh, I didn't realize. I thought you told me that. You texted me that. No, like I literally said he was in the go one going to see that movie. Oh, I thought I miss I read it as Gata's in the film. But he is, but he is. He is, which makes even more sense. But dude, so when I heard him and ended the video, he's like, Yeah, Sony shut this whole thing down for me. And I was like, Well, they did it, Gata. Which is something that his character would do. Yeah. On D. <laughs> so to see him seriously, you know what I mean? I agree. Gata in the show is always hyping shit up that's not really that hype. Yeah. And he did it in real life. And I was like, yeah, this dude is like, this is who he is. Yes. Yeah. Holy shit. That's funny. Maybe they did. Like what? Maybe he was like the only person in the theater to watch it. Maybe. But like <laughs> it wasn't what he said it was. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like some red carpet event. Yeah. It was 10 in the morning. He just came it back from the strip club. It was 10 in the morning. Club. Yeah. Time out. <laughs> did, did it say the name of the strip club in the video? Because I want to Google which one it is in LA. <laughs> I don't know. But he was there. Earlier than 10 a.m. Because well, unless it was d- from last night or something, but it probably was. 
But I know of one strip club around here that does open at like 8 a.m. That's crazy. And they serve lunch too. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been there. It's literally right next to one of my favorite burrito spots. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, back to Comic Con. Back to Comic Con. Fuck strip clubs. Comic Con was a dope experience. It. I. I definitely want to go back. I, I do want to go back with the. Now I'd feel more confident. Like I would go back easily to another Comic Con and go up to creators and be like, Bing, bang, boom. Yeah. Now we know. Like now we really know what to do. But seriously, seriously. because I feel like it's intimidating in some ways to just like you don't know who this person. Like you know, I think it's funny. Like at cons, you'll notice like if a creator is not by their table, or sometimes they are by their table, but there's like three people sitting behind it. A lot of people don't know what comic book creators look like at all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's hilarious because you could be walking by like Chip Zartsky, but if you've never seen him before, like you don't know, but I know what he looks like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for sure. But like even in terms of just like for me as a writer and a comic book reader, like these people aren't like celebrity level, but like meeting them is is a bit you know, there's that intimidation, I guess. But after doing this con and even New York Comic Con, it doesn't feel that way anymore. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I and they're agree. friendly people, most of these people. Some people, like you're saying, didn't want to talk. They were just very <laughs> silent. Yeah, like that one dude. I forget his name, but whatever. Oh, there was you one know, artist. Yeah, he's a big about. artist. He wasn't. JC. JC. Yeah, we, we'll call him JC. No, there was that. nothing negative, and he was laughing no, while we were he, talking. He, he just clearly wasn't trying to talk. So. Yeah, he was also sketching something. So to be fair, that's what he was doing. But whatever. He also wasn't even trying to sell that hard either. Right. So like a big part of the con too is like it's a giant flea market basically, right? If it you is. want to call it that. Like people are selling. Like uh, going back to this dude, Aubrey Sitterson, I saw him when people approach a table get like really sell hard. He was doing a really good job of that. Like you have to. Some people, some he people was. you'll walk by. He was hustling. And, right? He was hustling. Some people you'll walk by. And they'll be like, hey, how's it going to like, like hey, get your attention? $20 for this book, $40 for that. Like, exactly. Like, but right, some cool, dude. <laughs> some people are like sitting there looking uh, tired on their phone. Exactly, like, yeah. Sorry, we're not buying this dude, anything. This dude wasn't. He was doing a good job. He was like, actually, if you like this, you're going to love this. Yeah. He, he was like super into, yeah, you know, I was, he, he was trying to sell us, but I was like, you know what? You're earning your buck right now. Exactly. Because I, I, I don't agree with like, um, I don't know. A lot of people will say like online, like, oh, that's self-promotion, that's self-promotion. But like, who else is going to promote your shit? Like, exactly. you know what I mean? You need to, we're all, we're all doing something, creating something. Like you got to, you got to put it in people's faces or else where's it going to go? Where is it? No one's going to see it. Exactly. So I, I respect that. I, I respected everyone who was hustling there because everyone was, you know? Yeah. Even Dan Slot. Dan Slot. We talked to him for a second. That was spoke cool. to him, asked him to come on, and I respect his answer. He said mm-hmm. no, but he gave us a reason. But he was like, no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, cool. I was like, you know what? Honestly, I respect the shit yeah. out of that instead of just jerking me off. Be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if, if you know anything about Dan Slott, like there was even yeah, like- he had some uh, funny stories. Yeah, so, so what I asked him was if he's been playing the new Spider-Man, but he doesn't have a PS5 or I think he didn't even have a PS4 is because he would just blow a deadline if he was playing Spider-Man. He, he said that DC- Took his PS4 and like locked it in the office. Oh, Marvel, you mean? Yeah, Marvel. Sorry, took his PlayStation and mm-hmm. locked it away until he like finished writing a book. Yeah, he was cool because he was down to talk. Yeah, exactly. And he and he he had one of the longest lines there. Like we yeah. we talked to him when we saw there was no line temporarily, but as we were talking, there was a line, line forming behind building us. Up, yeah, but there's a Disney Plus uh, documentary series called Marvels. Marvel 616 or something like that. And each thing's about something different, but there's one where they interview a bunch of creators and stuff. And there's a segment about Dan Slott where he just like, all all the artists he works with are pissed because he keeps missing deadlines and shit. Like he's just not writing. And I guess it's true because that's literally why yeah, yeah. he won't play Spider-Man 2 and why he won't come on a podcast because he's just too yeah. busy. He said, yeah, he's, he's not even, he doesn't sound like he's good with time management. Yeah, and that's fair. I mean, we're all like that. So I'm like, not good with time management. <laughs> so. No I, hate I for Dan Slott. Yeah, no hate for Dan Slott for me, in all honesty. And I love his Spider Man stuff. I know not everyone's a huge fan, but I'm a fan. So shout out to DS. Dan DS? <laughs> Dan DS Sleazy. on the DL, bro. Oh, wait. Or, I mean, he's probably, I don't know. I, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Even if he is, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, who? Else? Oh, Tony Fleeks. You picked up. We we both picked up some Stray yes. Dogs books. Yes. Yeah. I'm very hyped. Shout out to Booms for years now recommending Stray Dogs, and I've intentionally been ignoring him, but 
when we saw Tony <laughs> Fleeks. <laughs> he knows it. We, we talk about it. But because uh, he'll be like, you fucking asshole. You still haven't gotten Stray Dogs? And I was like, nah, you know, I'm pretentious. I was like, I don't read dumb shit. You know, anything I don't know or don't like, like, I don't view as worth reading until like I finally succumb and do it when you guys yeah. suggest it. <laughs> the Stray Dogs is far from dumb. <laughs> I have been more open over the years, though, I think. Yeah. From when we started to now, I think I've been more opening to reading shit. I think so too. I think so. I think I think you've definitely like it was that first year. It was actually. I'll be honest, dude. (laughs) It was that one book you recommended. Which one? Where I almost lost all the one I returned. (laughs) That was before the podcast. Was it? No, I think that was like maybe you're right. You're right. It was way before we ever did the podcast. I had. I think you know what? It inspired me to do the podcast because I was like, well. (laughs) <laughs> I don't. I don't want to talk about shitty comics like this one that Anthony suggested. The, the book Jake is talking about is called Peter <laughs> Peter Cannon Thunderbolt, which I actually really like. It's by Kieran Gillen. Casper Weingard is is the artist. I like it. It's like Watchmen. It's like a different take on Watch. I I don't know. Everything's nine panels. Jake didn't like this at all, but I would recommend it if you like good not. comics. And, I, yeah. and I'm not even going to not recommend it. I just, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for you. Yeah, like, yeah. I literally, within the first 10 pages, I was like, I don't like this shit. And I returned it. I've never once returned a comic book, but I had to do it. Comic book Twitter is actually really hot this week in the sense really? that there was this guy, there was this comic book shop owner. He's he's owned a comic shop for like oh, 30 years. You heard, oh, you heard ex- about this? Yes. It leaked I, off I, of I'm Twitter? Sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, here, here's the story. I th- I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. So this guy, it's just a clip of like a longer interview, but um, he he's just like, oh, the, re- the reason comics aren't selling nowadays is because people are putting too much of themselves Selves and the characters. He's like, we just want a good Iron Man story. There's, there's just like a, a an underlying thing where there's like a section of comic book fans that don't want to read about diverse voices and things like that. Like any writer that isn't a white dude writing their favorite character, they're like, well, this is shit. Oh, women shouldn't write comics. Like, there's a real section of the comic book community that oh, believes yeah. this. It's a big section too. And I feel like this empowered them. Like, there's there's half the people that are online saying that that are using that clip for that. And there's people that are like defending him that are like, well, he's a comic shop owner, so he would know. And, you know, a lot of people went after his appearance and shit because he's an, he's an old, like, he's out of shape fat dude. old piece of shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny. I, I read this exact same thing you're talking about. And I'll, I, just, I disagree, and I know we all do, but, like, I yeah. disagree for a few reasons. One, oh, I didn't even take you to my comic book shop. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I next, didn't next do time. that. It was, it, my, the comic shop, I took Cody there. It's, it's a big-ass shop, first off, brick and mortar. It's been there for a minute. It's called Pulp Fiction Comics. It's LGBTQT owned and operated. Nice. So it's like I call – and dude, specifically like what he wrote was like, oh, no one wants to read about stories about these people or created by these people. It's like, dude, you're like literally wrong. Yeah, like, no, It, it almost is. doesn't even matter about your opinion. It's that like you're factually wrong. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Jake. So it's like, dude, shut the fuck. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Look, we like to crack jokes here in Comics Chronic, but we are not part of that toxic subculture. You know no, we're mean? not. I think everyone that listens knows that. And the reason yeah. I even brought it up is because of what you just said. Like, I don't like that comic. It's not for me, but if that doesn't mean I'm not going to suggest it. It's just not for me. Exactly. And that's comics. Like, if you don't like a fucking comic, that's fine. Like, just don't read it. Read what you like. It's so easy. Like, it's so easy to just be a normal person and like comics, but a lot of people just, for some reason, they can't. No, I know. And I I remember reading that thing that he wrote. It was also about, like, women creators. Oh, no, okay, so you're confusing this, but this is what I'm saying. So this was this guy's video clip, and he's just, again, a comic shop owner or whatever. Mark Miller, you know Mark Miller, right? Yes, yes, yes. He goes on Twitter to defend this guy. Okay. He's like, oh, I think this is totally uncalled Maybe for the way people are attacking him. Fuck Mark Miller. Like, we like his some of his comics, but he's yeah. gone off the deep end. Not even that. He's just, I don't like his views. I don't like what he talks about nowadays. He's anti-weed. Fuck him. I mean, look, <laughs> I'll be honest. If Alex Ross came out as, like, the biggest conservative, <laughs> I would I would still be like, his art's really good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if Jim Lee was like, hey, I hate gay people, I'd be like, God damn it, Jim Lee. <laughs> you cannot be this good of an artist. <laughs> say these things. Like, <laughs> it really makes it hard to support you, but I'm still going to do it, but I hate yeah, you. Yeah, but good thing Jim Lee's <laughs> not an asshole. Asshole. Yeah. Um, but but no, so like uh he says this, Mark Miller defends him, and then so like I'm saying it's it's empowering this this section of the comic book community. And one of this guys, I I brought him up before. His name is Ethan Van Siver. He's done a lot of 
I don't know how you say his name. I don't even care. He does. He's done a lot of Green. Lan- <laughs> <laughs> he's done a lot of Green Lantern, right? Jeff yeah. Johns Green Lantern. He did a lot of art. A lot of people don't like his art. His art is kind of shitty. But he's like the head of like this de facto like section of the comic book community that are saying the things you're saying. So what you read is his tweet. You oh, read his tweet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I read that tweet. Which is just bullshit. Like, yeah, he's saying, like, women don't understand how to write He talks about super- women and, like, gay and trans people. He's like, we don't... Yeah, I was like, I disagree with you. Especially, like, I didn't need this, and this wasn't the first instance, but, like, even just, like, meeting Teeny Howard, and I have read volume one of her Catwoman run, and, and I was like, I disagree. Like, you're just wrong, man. No, absolutely. Uh, they always attack her. They always attack Heather Antos, who we've had on the pod. Yeah, you were telling me they... they yeah, exactly. It's disgusting. But That's kind of cool. I, I, yeah, I just really hate that because I really don't like that there's it's a lot of people that are like that in comics and that oh, they represent sure. comic book readers. No, I don't want to be lumped in with that crowd at all. No, ever. Exactly. No. We are yeah, and for any commies out there, just know <laughs> this. If you share those kinds of negative views, suck our dicks. Get the fuck out of here, you shit. Yeah. I mean, you definitely shit. still Sorry, keep listening so we can get the play count, but <laughs> Hate listen uh, to us if that's yeah, who you are. Hate listen to us so you can hear the views that we don't agree with you on. <laughs> yeah, but just know that we hate you too. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. I'm not down with that shit. Especially like, I don't know. I like to say fucked up shit, but I don't actually ever like mean half, more than half of it. <laughs> <laughs> more than half <laughs> of like, it. <laughs> I don't ever mean like 80% of it. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I know that. I think we're all, we, <laughs> like, I think, um, this is what I'm saying. I think anyone listening, no one's going to lump us in with those people. I, 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 I just, I just hate that that stupid clip went so viral to empower so many. Like, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, if this guy, like, I really think the clip, the implication of what the guy is saying is diverse voices in comics don't work and that's why they're not selling because if it wasn't, why did it empower these people so much to just be like, yeah, you're right, dude. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't, I, I don't like that. So I don't defend that guy. I think you should just read what you like, buy the books you like. I feel like also like going back to like, like you mentioned our other guests, prove otherwise. A hundred percent. Philadelphia is wildly successful. You know what I mean? Like, and not only that, it's wildly personal. I, I yeah. literally the same day, and I don't want to. I didn't want to tweet it because I don't want to bring Rodney Barnes into any drama. But I, yeah, I'm just yeah. a huge fan of Rodney <laughs> Barnes. He put a reel out where he's like, "Philadelphia is an incredibly personal story. Like the the yeah. story between b- between Jimmy and James Sangster is actually him and his dad. Like he said, or like he points out a specific scene where it's like he went to the cemetery when his dad died or something like that. The point being, like this guy's point was. Personal stories don't work. We don't want that. But they always make for better stories. They make them feel real. We talk about this in a lot of episodes, you know, like, what do you want in your comics? Like, it's just, that's why I feel like it's like a stupid way of them saying, we don't want so-and-so to write comics. You know, fuck 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 that. Fuck those people. Fuck that. But all that to say, we didn't run into any of that at LA Comic Con. It was all chill vibes. It was good times all around. Super chill. It's also California, bro. We're chill out here. (laughs) We don't have time for that lame shit. It was not my first time in California, but my first time in L.A. You didn't really experience much of it. It was mostly just downtown and where I live. Yeah. <laughs> and the beach, the, the boardwalk. But. Yeah, Venice Beach was fun. Um, it was cool to, to walk down that. Venice Beach is good. Um, we went to In-N-Out. The first, the first, yeah. the first, first thing last. we did. Yeah, first and last stops. We capped it off with in and out <laughs> <laughs> No, in and out was cool, but like, I, I don't think... It would be like, so if I had In-N-Out in New York, I don't think it would be my go-to burger place, but I still liked yeah. it a lot. It's it's only the go-to out here for me. Well, that depends. McDonald's is literally across the street. <laughs> but like... Oh, better than McDonald's. It, it's better than McDonald's, so it's like, I will go and get In-N-Out. I also, don't get me wrong, I don't even like, there are, like, we've talked about it, there are better burgers. I think Five Guys is better. Yes, so I agree. Shake Shack, but they're just way more expensive. Yes, a hundred percent. In and Out is super economic and super delicious. Yeah, for the price and for the no. price, it's bomb. And we got it super fast, despite it being crowded. No matter what, dude, and those motherfuckers work, and they get yeah. paid even before California passed a law. Starting like wages for In and Out employees is like twenty five an hour. Wow. Yeah, no, no bullshit. That's actually pretty like, cool. Their company, like the company itself, is known for like pretty relatively like treating their employees pretty well. You know, nice. I mean, like McDonald's does not have that reputation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> McDonald's really? I thought they were great. Yeah, no, 
they're great people. Um, but before we were talking about Stray Dogs, quick, I, I, I don't oh, want it to yeah, sound yeah. like Tony we did. Tony Fleeks! We, I yeah. got a bunch of signed shit from him. Dude, speaking of Fleek, look who's on Fleek right now. Hey. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Put on the sunglasses. If only the people could see. I just put on sunglasses. Oh, they felt it. No, but Stray Dogs is an awesome comic. I picked up the second volume. Uh, read Stray Dogs if you haven't, because that's a fucking great comic. And Tony Fleeks also co-writes and co-draws Local Man with Tim Seeley. Local Man I was- I bought that shit a couple of weeks ago. We're going to do an episode once Jake and Cody read it. That was one of the best comics of 2023, in my opinion, Local Man. If you haven't read it, it's an image comic. If you like 90s comics, you'll love that comic. I'm very excited. Yeah, you should check that out. Tony Fleeks, Tim Seeley. We also saw at the con, we, we saw Scott Koblish, who has been on the podcast. The Cobes, Kobe the Beef. Cob- Kobe, Scott Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> yeah. Remember we got high? We we're like, who'd win in a fight? <laughs> Kobe Smulders, Kobe Bryant, Scott Koblish. <laughs> all the great Kobes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who would win that fight? <laughs> yeah. You guys can vote. Yeah. Which Kobe or Koblish or Colby? Kobe, any, any, Colby, or Koblish. Yeah, exactly. Are we missing any Colbys? But he, he was cool. I was very high when we were talking to him. <laughs> if I was quiet, I was very high. I even told Matt Boers, and I was like, dude, if I'm quiet right now, like, it's just, I'm just really high. I, <laughs> I was like, it's not because. Yeah, we were high the right. whole time. <laughs> yeah. We, dude, no we still on business, there. and we stood on weed. Yeah. I, I bought a, a comic from Scott Koblish. He, he's the artist, and the writer's Jerry Duggan. Also, uh, Brian Posehn is a co-writer for that. But I at the at the con, I I talked to Jerry Duggan quick, um, like a really quick convo. But he seems to be down for the pod. They both do because they write one of the few weed comics. That's the thing. Like I was looking for weed comics too, and I always look for those because there's not enough. There's not many. And who else would want to come? You talk about that one guy we met. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah that remember dude. that? What was his comics name? Oh fuck, Dope Cat. Dope cat. I I don't know if you guys have heard of this, and I don't want to make any <laughs> accusations, but I think this dude wrote, wrote a wrote and drew a blackface weed smoking cat. Cat, yeah. I don't know about that. We met this dude, and he seemed he seemed a like a huge stoner. Huge like, stoner. Very California. He's like, oh, well, I, he's like, I wrote this comic called Dope Cat. <laughs> the the best part is he was like, he's, we're like, yeah, we're, we're a podcast, comics and chronic. He's like, oh, you're a podcast? How come I haven't heard of you? Yeah, and I was he like, said that. dude, we haven't heard of you. Like, yeah, who the I'm fuck glad are we you? haven't. Yeah, and then Anthony bought that uh, comic book. Yeah, I bought it, and then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, as soon as I opened it and read it. the dialogue, I was like, oh, no. It seems super racist. Super yeah. racist. I hate <laughs> I hate that I gave that guy money. Like, I gave him 10 bucks. I, I'll never get that it, 10 bucks back. It actually, back. now that you say that, it makes me feel better about supporting that autistic dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather wait. I what? I'd rather support an autistic dude than a dude. Yeah, a when you left me hanging with that guy, and I was like forced to give him money. <laughs> You're blaming me for that one. No, I'm just blaming autism. It's it. It goes to show that it's a terrible disease. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, there were no. No, I met this yeah, the, autistic creator. He was actually cool, and I liked. I'll tell you what I do like. He he wrote this comic about him. Uh, the hero in it is autistic, so I, I respect the shit out of that. But uh. Yeah, that's all I'll say. <laughs> it wasn't. A, it wasn't a great. It wasn't bussing, you know. It didn't. It didn't look great. I mean, a lot of people at the con have art that's there that's not particularly well done at all. You know, there's there's a certain style yeah. that you could just tell. You're like, I'm not getting quality here, and that's okay. You know, you need to grow as an artist. If I wrote a, if I wrote a shitty comic or story, I would. I would. You know, people got to be honest. You know, dude. I'll be honest. After seeing, like, yeah, like, A, the, the talent there, you know who should start going to a con? Joey. Joey, right? Yes. Seriously. Yes. No, for real. He a, can sell so much bomb, shit there. And it yes. was way better than half the shit there. Like, I honestly, agree. like, other than the big the big wigs and some up cool, obscure shit we found, like, Joey would have been better than half the creators there. I agree. And and that's really so, not disrespect to any creators. I think yeah, Joey it's, is it's just not. really talented. And it's also not disrespect to Joey. I think, Joey, you need to go to a fucking con and start selling your shit. Yeah. No, seriously, because I think Joey's art especially is very unique. Like, it would stand out. And he's drawn comic books. Yours, he's done Super Guy, he's done Space Penguin. Right, Super Guy, yeah. He, he did a children's book, uh, Bear's Day Out, you know? 
Bear's Grand Day. Yeah, Bear's I Grand have that Day's one actually. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Jake, we're, we're also forgetting about the second. Per- we okay. The first person we talked to was Matt Boers. The second person we talked to was Rikishi. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Rikishi was there. How can I forget the Reeks? The Reeks, dude. Rikishi, yeah. We got to get him on the podcast. We're going to get Rikishi on the podcast. Yeah, let's for get sure. him on. He he wants to come on. We were talking to Rikishi. It was cool because we didn't even know he was going to be there. He just no like, way. literally like we saw him down an aisle and I was like, you know, we were like, dude, that's Rikishi. So we go up to him. Turns out Rikishi has a comic book. Yeah, it's called Kishi and the Island of Dreams and it's written and drawn by Eric McElroy Jr. Yeah, Eric McElroy Jr., um, they seemed very cool. You know, Rikishi seemed really cool. So did Eric McElroy Jr. He seemed very chill. Uh, I grew up, so did Anthony, on WWE or slash WWF with Rikishi yeah. and Scotty Too Hotty and Too Cool. Too cool. So I'm very down with, with Rikishi coming on the pod. Yeah, and it's and cool he, that he, he gave has us a, a book and he wants us to promote it. Yeah. And to review it. He wants us to review it. Even so. Yeah. So we're going to review. So, we're yeah, going to get Rikishi on. We're going to give, yeah. We give Rikishi some Pesci's. We'll see. You would never put Rikishi and Joe Pesci in the same sentence <laughs> until right now. <laughs> They've never been connected, right? They've never been connected until this moment. Dude, I'll tell you what we also did at Comic-Con is buy some sweet Legos. <laughs> oh, shit. We bought so many Legos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they're so cool, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even a Lego person. I was like, I'm not a Lego me. person. In the <laughs> this cup that I have was given to me by God knows who. But once I saw, like, honestly, once you pointed out that Two-Face Lego, I was like, "Ah, well, I got to get that. And then I was like, oh, wait, there's other cool Legos. Yeah, because they had Legos that are custom that I had never seen before. I don't think they come in any set, you know? No, they definitely, you could tell, like, the majority of those are made by people, not by Legos at all. Yeah, like, I got a sweet Donatello on a skateboard. That was really cool. I got Raphael on a skateboard. Nice. Our true turtles. I got Link from Zelda. Oh, yeah, we both got Link. Motherfucking Green Ranger. Nice. I got the Weasel Knack from Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and Two-Face. Nice. I also got uh, Superman and Spider-Man. Just some basic ones that I could probably get anywhere, but I liked them. Whatever. Oh, I also want to shout out uh, Timmy Heeg. He does... I hope I'm saying your last name right. Oh, that guy was funny. I liked him, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to get him on the pod. He seems super down for the pod as well. He seemed very down for the pod. And he he has energy. Yeah, he had great energy. Yeah, that's that guy, why, yeah, yeah, he was funny. That dude had great energy. He was funny. He also stood out because he wore a suit. He wore a suit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love no that No one gimmick. else is there wearing a fucking suit, but yeah. he is. He looked like a Wall Street dude. And for all books, he was he was promoting Fear the Funhouse Toy Box of Terror, which is an Archie horror comic, <laughs> yeah. which is hilarious. Like, he was wearing a suit, but this comic, I actually read it. It rules. Well, it, I like Archie. Hilarious? Yeah. Well, actually, it's not really funny. It's like it's Archie horror. It's funny in the sense that like always seeing Archie and like the, the Archie characters juxtaposed in like these really serious horror moments has like funniness to it. You know, like seeing a, a, a Archie that looks like Chucky from Child's Play is pretty That's funny, hilarious. you know, but I, I've been he's liking gonna the Archie stuff you. I've been reading, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, t- 2023 is the year I became an Archie fan for sure. Yeah. There's some good Everything shit out I've there. I've read of Archie so far is sick. I read The Hunger, read Vampironica. Great stuff. Super dope. That's not new stuff. It's newer stuff. But newer stuff. You know how we do on Comics and Chronic. We'll talk about anything we that's come out. can't keep up with everything out there, you guys. It's <laughs> physically impossible. I think we've done a pretty good job, though. Like We've talked about a lot of the big comics in the last like five to... 10 years, I think. Sure. We've talked no, about. Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, as far as like covering like all, all books and all genres, there's no way to realistically do Yeah, that. no way. And I think we do a pretty good job. Of course. I mean, look, we bring you that hot fire constantly. If we haven't brought it to you, it means we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind well, we don't of. know about it. But yeah, but it's kind of going back to like, if we don't like a comic, we're not going to shit here and trash it. We're just not going to talk about it. Yeah. And that doesn't mean every comic we don't talk about we don't like, but. We talk about a lot of shit we don't like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we, I, I mean, it's rare that we completely shit on something. Because I, I, I mean, I, I just don't want to. Because honestly, yeah, exactly. even if a comic is shit. We're not trying to be negative. But not even that. Like, we're allowed to be negative, right? We're human beings. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I just think that like a lot of work goes into a comic no matter how shitty it is. Maybe not every comic, but. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, also like. Going back to like, yeah, we try to keep up with shit. I like, I would never, well, genuinely would never have discovered 
Philadelphia without this podcast. Yeah, and that was your that was your suggestion too. I, well, she know how I do. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. So, so yeah, no. This comic books are just cool, you guys. Yeah. And going to LA Comic Con was cool. It was cool to support creators and whatnot. Yeah, I agree. That that's you know we got press passes, but I like going to cons like if they're close to me and I'm not getting a press pass. Like I, it's something I want to keep going to because they're fun. At this con too, there was like I was saying, there was a video game section, and we that played a cool. Jane Silent Bob video game that's coming out. Called, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's called Chronic Blunt Punch. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a two D arcade fighter, like Ninja Turtles, X Men, like Ninja Turtles slash Simpsons slash X Men, like arcade game. Yeah, the graphics were sick. It was cool. It was very fun. It was funny and silly and stupid. You're just like beating up kids the yeah, whole you're time. Just beating, <laughs> you're literally punching children. Yep, uh, Cody will love it. Yeah, <laughs> punching children and collecting. Because Cody weed. abuses his son. Oh no! no I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cody does not abuse his son. No, never. At least not physically. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know why I'm saying any of this shit. I'm just wild today. This is that Godzilla, bro. That like, got you're on that yeah. Godzuki. I don't have that dog in me. I got that god in me. Ooh, that god. That god in me. <laughs> yeah. That God, which is dog, dog backwards. Back, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, shagalaga. Um, I think that's everyone we talked to. We saw Elijah Wood from a distance. Oh, the big E. The big E. E Woods. Yeah. E Woods. E Woods. <laughs> yeah. No, we actually like we did. We kind of just caught the end of his panel. Like he's he's going to be part of a horror comic coming out from Spectre Vision and Oni Press. Now that I know that. How at least at LA Comic Con, how the whole panel thing worked. I would spend more time there to seek out who's there, you know? Yeah, it was a learning experience for sure. Oh, it was. I'm not mad at anything. I like I generally learned a lot about how I would go about the next one. And because Cody wasn't there, we're gonna blame him for, for whatever. Exactly. We couldn't do Everyone everything. Wrong, it's strictly Cody's fault. Come on, Cody. <sighs> Abusing but, your kids <laughs> and abusing us. Yeah. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> Cody's going to hate us. No, nah, yeah. He's gonna, what the <laughs> fuck? You guys just trashed my parent skills for like five minutes. <laughs> uh, no, C- Cody is a good father. I've seen it no, in my own Cody. eyes, you guys. Yeah. You all wish we had a father as good as Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if he was here, he would die laughing. That's so good. Oh, that might be one of the funniest. And I couldn't even finish saying it. I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's well, hilarious. LA Comic Con, how many Pesci's are you giving to Jake? Ooh, how many Pesci's? <laughs> you had a Pesci was, the Comic Con. I do. You know what? I'm giving it a six. Nice. Fuck it. I'll give it a six too. Of course. Whoa. It was what a great were you time. gonna give it? No, I wasn't gonna give it any other score. I mean, oh, okay. I, I be, be, honestly like, even if you take away the fact that we met Kevin Smith, it would still be a six. Like that That's was true. just like solidified. It. Kevin Smith alone was solidified the six. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's that comic synchronic vibe. Like Kevin Smith showed up and we got showed to meet up. him. Was not billed at yeah. all. Uh, like w- no one knew he was going to be there. Yeah. Like even in the room that he was in for that panel, there were like, what, 20 people tops? Maybe? Yeah. Less. Because if people knew, there would be a long ass exactly. line and everyone Dude. wouldn't fit there. I think there were less than 20 people in there. Yeah, I mean, probably, no, 20, probably 30 20, people. Probably 20, 20. Yeah, we were sitting in the front, though. We were, yeah, we didn't give it. I also fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to give Jake the tap. Like, yo, <laughs> the teacher's watching, bro. I was also, like, right in the middle yeah. of the view of everyone. Like, Kevin Smith, all the panelists. Thank God I wasn't snoring, but I probably would have started. <laughs> it would have been fucking hilarious if you did fall asleep and Kevin Smith pointed it out. <laughs> I know, that would have been hilarious, <laughs> But both of us asked questions at the panel, which I thought was cool too. That was we did. Yeah, I would definitely go to more panels in the future. I love being part of press. It was yeah, fun to have that of ability. The, press, man. the power of the press prevails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're like Jade. Ooh, that's what I'm gonna go as next time. If we're gonna get press badges, I'm going as Jay Jonah Jameson. Ooh, oh, that would be so sick. That dude. would be sick. That would be very sick. Yeah. Something we want to do, we need to do, is really have all three of us at a con. So invite us to your con, no matter where it is. We'll try to get there. We will Give us press there. passes. We'll shout it out. We'll be there. 
We'll stand on business. Speaking of con, we also have Cody's con coming up. Yes. Well, that's not a con. That's a Red Eye Comedy Fest. Right. That's his Red Eye Comedy Festival. Um, April. That he promotes and puts on and founded. It's a big comedy fest in Appalachia. It's in April in West Virginia. You guys should definitely look out for those dates. Yeah, we'll we'll talk more about that because we're all three going to be there. We're going to do a live comics we're and chronic do a episode. Live comics and chronic recording. You guys, this is going to be sick. Literally, it's it's groundbreaking. People have not done this before. There's going to be a live audience there. There's going to be a it's live gonna... <laughs> audience. Yeah, we're going to have to be on our A game. Cody's got some secret powers. Like putting on this fest, I I totally respect that he does it. Cody does. He 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 pulls some big names too. Yeah, hell yeah. So it's it's cool. So look out for us. Well, Comics and Chronic is traveling the world. Oh, we, fucking uh, on my flight home. That was the final thing. Oh, yeah. Willem Dafoe is in fucking first class, That's dude. That's so cool. Like So like, what happened? Did you turn the corner and he was just there? Sitting? No, so I'm like boarding the plane and like, you know, there's just the line. I'm one of the last people to get on the plane, actually. And I just look. I'm just looking, you know, and I just notice he's looking out the window. I'm like, wait a minute. And then he turns and looks at me. I'm like, Hey, how's it going? He's like, hey. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Like in my head, I'm like, oh shit, Willem Dafoe. Oh shit, Willem Dafoe. Like, did you nod at him? Yeah, I was like, hey, how's it going? He's like, he was just like, <laughs> like he just barely a smile. I was like, Godspeed, Spider Man. <laughs> but the girl walking behind me as we walked past him, she's like, oh my God, was that Willem Dafoe? I was like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, dude, I, I'll be honest, like, that happens a lot in LA. Like seriously, like like even today with Gata, like just like Kevin Smith, like what? Like you'll see motherfuckers random as shit. Yeah, but honestly, for my first trip to LA to run in to see Elijah Wood, to see Willem Dafoe, to meet Kevin Smith, dude, I want to go back. I want to come creme back. De la creme. Seriously, no. And you let for first of all, let's also say that I stood at your place the whole time. That's true. You showed me around LA. You drove me everywhere. You're the fucking man, Jake. I really appreciated that. Thank you. I know, I know. You're welcome. <laughs> Anybody that goes to LA, Jake will do the same exact thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's Sean, of course. Sean is no longer allowed at my place. <laughs> and I hope he hears this. No. Cody, <laughs> Cody is allowed at my place. He's a much you're I'll tell you this, you're a way easier house guest than Cody is. Everyone hear that? <laughs> yeah. Invite me to your house. You I probably don't want to come. Break shit. <laughs> But you also didn't cook. Cody cooked for me. So oh, that's, see. <laughs> Damn it, Cody. A great father and a great cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shit. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for guys. tuning in, guys. Yeah. Good times. LA Comic Con. Go next year if you can. Get tickets. Tickets aren't even that expensive They're compared not to other cons. You know? Honestly, yeah. It was a very, it was very affordable. Like the tickets were not expensive, especially compared to like San Diego Comic Con. Forget it. Yeah, seriously. And it was still, again, a good time. Great cosplay. Oh man, there was the creepiest yeah. fucking monkey cosplay oh, ever. That dude's, yeah, he was creepy as fuck. He had a severed hand and then he went up to a, a booth and a guy had ocarinas and the guy started playing the ocarina and the monkey starts dancing. And yeah. oh, there's a video on our page. You can check it out. It's creepy as fuck. That was, there was cool cosplay. I also saw my friend, I heard his voice. And I was oh, like, Will? <laughs> he was dressed as Agent Venom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was dressed as Agent Venom. <laughs> I remember we were walking. I just heard this dude talking. And I was like, Will, is that you? He's like, Jake. <laughs> you kind of instantly proved that if you were in the Marvel Universe, you would be like, Peter Parker? You're Spider-Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're right. I'd be like, I know that's you, Peter. That sounds like, like what? <laughs> yeah, Peter Parker? <laughs> oh, yeah. Real quick before we go. Also, shout out to Joey. I finally got to meet Joey. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. We did some smash. Smash Brothers. Yeah, we played some intense Smash Bros. match. That was fun. That was intense. That was the most Joey has ever won with me, personally. Oh, Joey was great. You guys were both I, great. I mean, I've I'm, always I'm known you were you, great. Training. I don't <laughs> think I did that. I don't think I did as well as when, like, Cody was here. Uh, maybe you're just better than Cody, in all honesty. What? Of course I am. No, I mean, obviously you are. We already <laughs> decided you are the best. He's not a time. great Smash Bros. He's great. At, he's a great father and a great cook. You can't get him to be <laughs> great at Smash Bros, too. Me and him had some intense Smash fights. That's why when I was fighting you, I was like, I wasn't doing as good, but you are harder. You know me. I stand on business. But you know what? We also played... With Joey there. We didn't play solo, dolo. You're right. One we never on did one-on-one. On one. You know what I mean? Okay, next time. might be a time. different story. Ooh, maybe we got to sh- try to find a way to like stream Smash Bros. Ooh, for the sick. commies. For the commies. They want to watch us play <laughs> yeah. Smash Brothers. We, like you said, we had some good matches. Yeah, All three of us. That was cool. That was a fun night. Or two fun nights. We did two nights of Smashing. 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, just, you know, just three bros bro smashing. Three bros smashing. That's it. <laughs> that should be. That's it. L.A. Comic Con. Three bros smashing. That's, yeah. that's the name of the episode. <laughs> All right. Good night, folks. Later. Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.